are in listen only mode. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Inspiration webinar. Inspiration Software is the embroidery software line of G7 Solutions and Designs and Machine Embroidery. Our Inspiration Software line includes My Block Pacer, My Quilt Embellisher, Perfect Embroidery Pro, Perfect Stitch Viewer, Word Art and Stitches, and My Quilt Planner. Tonight's webinar is Better Shape Up. We have a wonderful team assisting us tonight. Inspiration Tech Support Team, Nancy R., Chris L., Dory N., and I would like you to like to present to you our Inspiration Consultant, Catherine Artinus, the Pilates Pilot of PEP. Again, thank you for joining us and enjoy the webinar. Thank you so much, Dory. And uh, this evening is Better Shape Up. And with that title, I'd like to give a little shout out to the, some ladies in Michigan who have told us that they are losing weight learning their PEP because while the video or the uh, webinar is going on, they're on their ellipticals and trainers and so forth. So go to it, girls. Better shape up. And actually, I'd just like to give a shout out to all of you who join us uh, each month for the webinars. You're the reason we're here. So thank you very much for joining us, and we'll go ahead and start. Tonight we play with what I think is one of the most powerful tools we have, and that is the shape tool. It can be used to draw from scratch, reshape artwork and complex fill. It works on true type text because that is also artwork. And we're going to jump in here to our screen. Something that goes hand in hand with our shape tool is our artwork tool up here on our top toolbar. The drop down offers pin, rectangle, ellipse, triangle, diamond, most of which are polygons. If you need a more detailed review of the artwork tool, please revisit the 2015 July webinar that was on Artwork Appreciation 101. And tonight we'll start with using our pin. The pin can be used for line drawing and tracing and open and close shapes. And the way we do that is we simply click, move the mouse to another point and click, and we can draw mountains if we'd like and just continue with a zigzag or a straight line or not so straight line. A right click will end that shape for us. We can also uh, do shapes that are somewhat closed. Again, a right uh, not closed, somewhat open. A right click will end it for us here. I'm going to go ahead and grab my different color at the bottom. We can do closed shapes like this star. And when you get to do a closed shape, you can just come right back on your original point, click once and right click to end it. We'll come back to that and talk about closing our shapes. Let's go back to our artwork tool, use our drop down arrow. We'll choose a rectangle and I can draw a rectangle. If I hold down my control key while I'm doing that, I get a perfect square change my color here. I'll go back and get the ellipse. I can draw an oval or again if I hold down my control key I can create a perfect circle. Once we have these artwork shapes drawn we are going to go to our shape tool which really is our go-to for any design manipulation. I'll select it and come over here on our open shape and as I click we see points on the lines. Now this is actually a path and the path of the shape passes through the points. Some people call those nodes. It's an interchangeable term. And the point appears where the path changes direction and certainly at the beginning and the ending of the path. These points can be manipulated to change the shape of the path. So I could click on that particular point and drag in a different way. If I click on this star, we have uh, the points as well. And certainly I could pull these points up and out. However, I want to redo that particular shape. And let's come back here for just a moment and 
revisit this point right here. You may remember that that was my starting point, and I also came back and clicked on it with a right click to end. But if I were to zoom in very closely, that may or may not be a closed shape. So what I can do is go over here and get my shape key again, and I'm going to right click on that point, come down, and ask it to close the line for me. And you can see that it does close that shape. That's a very good habit to get into um, if indeed you really want the closed shape. Another thing we can do with our right click is a right click on a point, we are given characteristics of that point, this group of four right here. The line is going to give us a straight path into the point and out of the point. And by default, with this simple draw tool, that is uh, the point that is currently on all of these that I've done, except of course the circle. It is the line. If I were to come down and click on smooth, a couple things happen. You see that the path going into the point and out of the point is curved, and I'm also given a handle. I can click on that handle and drag either or both sides, and you see what happens as I continue to lengthen that handle. The arc of that path is being manipulated. The thing about smooth is that handle will always stay straight. So if I drag and go to the side, then I'm altering both sides of that path. If I right click and come down to symmetrical, again, it looks very similar to the first one, but with symmetrical, watch what happens when I drag the handle, they will um, size evenly. So that if I drag in or out, it's going to remain the same length. It also will keep a straight line for that handle, and it is manipulating both sides of that path. And lastly, I have a cusp. If I click on cusp, the difference here is that the handles can be used independently of each other, and I can come in and make any type of outside shape that I'd like using a cusp. The thing about cusp is you cannot use a cusp if the point is already set to line. You can see that nothing happens there. What we need to do is first choose either smooth or symmetrical, and once we do that, we then can ask it to be a cusp and change the two sides for that. So a little bit of knowledge about those characteristics. We're going to play a little bit. Again, tonight is all about the shape key, so I want to make sure that you're very comfortable with the options and so forth that we find under shape. And to get us started, or to continue, I'm going to select each one of these, and actually I'm just draw a box around them, I'm going to select each one of these closed shapes, do a right click, convert to, and complex fill. Because what we're going to play with you'll be able to see better if they are filled. We start with this rectangle up here, and I'm going to come over. It is now selected. I have to come back and get my shape key, and I see different symbols that are here once we have filled this with thread. Not only do I see my points on each corner, but I also see a green dot representing the starting point of this stitch out, and the red dot representing the ending point. You also see two black circles with a yellow line. The, this particular line represents the angle of our stitching. If I were to drag that over there, come over here to the properties and click on apply, did you notice how the thread direction has changed? Let me do the undo, so we'll put it back to the original, and it's more of a vertical. And then again, when we apply that angle, you see the thread change. So that's one of the things that we have built in. We also, I'm going to move this black circle out of the, oops, that's okay, it doesn't affect what we're doing here. I'll move that angle line just a little bit. And what we want to play with right now is a right click, and you see right here that we have the ability to add an embossed line. So let's play with that for a moment. I have it ready to use, I'm going to click, 
and bring my mouse down just more as a vertical line and click and for right now I will right click to end that emboss. If I select it so that you can see it, can you tell that we actually put an indention right in the middle of our stitching? I'm going to drop this density down just a little bit so that you see some difference here. Put that down to a point three, and you'll really see our emboss show up. Let's play with that some more. We'll get our shape key, a right click, do an add emboss, and this time I'm going to click at the top, come into this vertical line that I already did, and bring it back down and right click, and if we take a look, you can see that I've put in the letter K. Now, the lower leg of the K, not as noticeable, and that's because of the slant of the thread that we have. So let's take that shape key, and we'll change that direction, that angle, and I'll make it a straight horizontal and apply. We'll see if that has fixed our embossing, and it did. So we have a nice little K in there. This becomes very fun for you to play with because you can add your own, your own shapes. You could do a little hidden message in your uh, complex fill. You can make it personalized. Um, you can even do where I have connected each of my embossing to the sides. We'll get that shape key again and right click, add the embossed line. You can also create what some people call a stamp. And if I click and make whatever shape I want in the middle there and then take a look at it, you can see that I have uh, what looks like an O, but it could be a, a, a different kind of symbol or shape. If I choose shape again, notice that I have my points, so I could right click and smooth those out if I wanted to, to smooth out that emboss. Uh, whatever I think I want to do here, I can do and add fun to our look. Speaking of embossed, we also have the option. I'll take our oval down here with our complex fill. Come on over here, follow me to the properties box, and you see that we have the standard fill with tatami. We'll use our drop down arrow and come down and notice that we already have an embossed fill type. We'll go ahead and apply that, and you see what pretty look you can get to your fill stitch in doing the emboss. We have a drop down arrow that's going to give us uh, close to 100 different options for our emboss. And one of the things about them, you sort of have to play with them and apply because some of them are large just by the, um, the way that they were created. And in this particular one, with this small of an oval, I probably wouldn't use that. I would go back in my list and see if I could find something else that was a little smaller that filled that oval better. And quite honestly, I think I really like the very first one that was offered for me, 100. And as I apply, that's more symmetrical to the size of that oval. So don't forget that you have that option as well. We will play some more. Let's select our circle and come get our shape key because we have to come back over here to select that to see our different points and our options. We will right click on the outline and this time we're going to play with what's called add hole. Let's go ahead and click on that and as I click within my filled image and I can make whatever shape I want inside there. A right click will end it, and that's exactly what I'm given. It said to add a hole, and that's what we did. We added a hole inside of our complex fill. Once again, with those points, I could select them and smooth them out if I thought. That handle needs to fix that up a little bit, and maybe smooth some others and apply, and I could get more of a rounded look to that. The other thing that's very interesting is if I did a right click and asked to add the hole again, I can click within that hole, draw whatever shape I want, and the software gives me a hole within a hole. And because the software is logical, it knows that I can't put an empty hole inside of an empty hole, so it automatically filled it with some stitch. Now we have a little bit of jump stitch going on there, but the idea is to see that we have this capability. 
All right, remember that with a fill shape, a right click is going to allow me to add a hole. Let's come over here to this shape that is open and it is not filled. So we will do a right click and notice that instead of offering an add hole, it's going to offer for me an add outline. This does pretty much the same thing as our add hole did within our filled shape, but this is still artwork, but it allowed me to do that. Now, once I select this, I want you to notice two things first of all. This is an open shape. So too, if you can tell right there, that is not closed. Yet if I do a right click, convert to, complex fill, it automatically closed that shape for me because again, logically, the software knows I've asked to fill it and you can't fill something that's open. So it automatically closed both of those. And once it was a complex fill, here is my hole. Now there's another way that you can do that with a combined key. We've done that in past webinars, but we're talking about the shape key this evening, and this, I think, is a very fun look to that. Um, when we are talking about the shape and adding holes, that might look to you like something you would never do, but let me give you a practical example. We'll bring up a clean screen. I'm going to go down here to my library, and here are the folders that we have in the software. I'm going to scroll down until I find the Perfect Embroidery Pro free designs. You all have these when you have installed your Perfect Embroidery Pro. They come with the software. And if I scroll down just a little bit, I know the one that I want is this hot chocolate. I don't know where you're living at the moment, but here in Erie, Pennsylvania, hot chocolate tonight would be just perfect. I'll go ahead and back out just a little bit so you can see the cup and we will come back to sequence view noticing that this cup is grouped. I don't care at the moment that it's grouped because I'm not going to really do anything with the cup. What I want to show you instead is how you might use that add hole to your advantage to something like this. So let's go get our ellipse tool and I'm going to draw an oval around my cup. I will select both of them. I'm going to select my cup and my oval, come up here to our center line, and now they are centered. And then I'm going to back out just a little bit here so we can see better. Coming over to my side toolbar, I'm going to turn on the grid. Now some people like their grid lines up all the time. I'm not one of those. I like to create with an empty background, but it's very easy to pull that grid up when I need it, such as in this situation. And just as a refresher for some, and maybe uh, some new knowledge for those of you that got the software for the holidays, if I right click within that ruler, I can go into the grid settings and set the horizontal vertical placements of the you see that I have mine set at a half inch. You could set yours at an inch, at a quarter inch, in millimeters, whatever was convenient for you. Now, knowing that this is artwork, I'm going to click on my shape tool, right, and ask to add an outline. When you're talking about artwork, the outline does not have to be in the middle. It also can be on the outside of the shape and I can come right up here and do a right click to end. Now I have added that outline. Something else to point out to you here. I can see I'm not very even. Uh, I might bring that over just a little bit here on the sides. I think I'm still uneven. Um, we will scroll down and take a look please at this artwork down here. If I scroll we have two pieces of this artwork, but notice that when you use the outline, the add outline or the add hole, it's going to treat that unit as one. So I'm going to now right click, convert to complex fill, and it fills in that uh, frame for us. I'll turn on my 3D. Since I'm finished with my grid lines, I'll go ahead and turn those off. And here is our frame, perhaps make that just a little higher. 
uh, so I'm somewhat even on the top and the bottom. Oop, that's not going to work. I'm just going to pull both of them. But when, once we have this, we can leave that as a fill stitch, or I could come over into my fill type and choose a, something a little softer, perhaps a motif, and apply that. And I see now that's a little bit more airy, not quite as heavy of a frame. I could come in and choose any of these that I like. I'll go ahead and choose the diamond and see what that looks like. And with this, when I'm going to increase the pattern just a little bit and bump that pattern length up to a 5 and apply it. All different fun things that you can do. While we have this frame, to show you again the shape tool in the create outline, while I have it here, I want to refresh something with you as well. A right click, please notice that I can either create a border or create an outline. I'm going to choose to create the outline, set that distance at zero so it's right against my shape, and apply that. I'm going to right click on the color so you can see it, and yes, it has given me an outline or a shape uh, butted up right to that rectangle. And you'll notice that that is artwork. So I would need to finish that with a convert to run. And I'm going to come over here and choose my favorite bean and apply. And here is my outline. Now, I want to show something to you about outline. And here we can refresh. The frame is right here in blue, and I want to not see that for the moment. So I'm going to click on my eyeball and hide that blue frame so that you all can see that an outline gave me just the outside. All right, we will come back over here. I'll click back on that eyeball, and I'm going to select that outline and move it out of the way so that I can show you what border does for us. Selecting the blue, right click, create border, and here we have a difference. It has come in in blue, so again I'm going to change the color so you can see it, and two things are different. I'll come over here and hide my frame again, and do you see that border gave us not only the outside of the shape, but the inside of the shape as well. And also, in that one click, it set this border as a standard run stitch. So all I have to do then is change to bean if I want to, and then I have that look, and I'll come back over to my sequence view and click on my uh, eyeball so that I can see my frame. So that was a quick review for you between the difference of outline and border. All right, we'll catch our breath right there. Dory, do we have any questions coming in? Yes, we've got a couple of them. Our friend Kathy asked, can you create an outline which you just showed us on the inside of the um, oval, which you just took care of? Thank you very much. I, okay, I okay. looked on that list. She <laughs> love, love people weird. to think ahead, though. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does the pattern on the inside of the uh, border area, does that always right. come in broken up? You closed up that broken up look with the inside border. Yes, and that is one of the reasons I uh, chose the either the border or the outline because when we have this, uh, let me select this and take this out of the way and I want to show you here what we have. I'm assuming you're talking about this area here. Yes. Yes, the yes. hatch design. And it, it, this actually depends on the shape and the size of the uh, pattern length that you've set and the motif that you've you've set. It, there's a, a, a number of different combinations that are um, causing this effect. So if I increase that size, I might have less breaking or I might have more breaking. But generally, I can say. 99% of the time, if you're going to use a motif or uh, any type of motif, it's going to have some area that's broken. And that's just due to the way that the um, stitch is programmed to stitch out. 
one of the things you can do to play around with that to see if you get less or more. Um, now, this particular stop and start is on the inside of the oval, but you can play around and move your stop and starts, which may or may not give you a different look uh, of the broken up on the sides. It might make it not as nice or nicer. So it's just a matter of your playing to see it tightened up this edge and this edge, but I have a, uh, probably about the same amount of breaking in that center oval. So 99%, the answer is yes to that. You'll have a little bit of breakage. So that's just simply a mathematical algorithm as opposed to anything wrong with that design, correct? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And it's the algorithm based on all of the other um, choices that we've made. Once again, the choice of the size of the diamond the choice of the motif itself, the size of the outside shape. Uh, there's a lot of things going on when we ask the software to do that for us. Um, absolutely nothing wrong with the motif fill at all. No. Super. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. And can you tell us one last one last question? Um, when you're doing any kind of embroidery like this. Mm -hmm. Do you use a cutaway stabilizer for behind this design? Um, sitting and trying to pick out tearaway would be very frustrating. Yes, um, and the the cutaway, the, the fill of this hot chocolate would benefit um, from a cutaway. You might, depending on the type of fabric that you have, you may want to just cut away the inside of the oval and then the outside shape, um, depending, it depends on the project that you have. But yes, either a cutaway um, or again what you're doing it on, you, a wash away would also help with not having that. But I, I would agree with you with the tear away. If it's okay, depending on the, the project that you have or your project's going to be lined, um, that would be the only reason I'd use a tearaway is Super. if I was going to have the back covered. Mm -hmm. Super. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you all for those questions. We're coming now to a clean screen, and throughout this webinar, I'll be showing you some shortcuts or option changes of which you might not be aware. Sometimes an instructor will show you these in your first or second class, and you might not know enough yet to see why they would be helpful. So in keeping with tonight with our shape tool and our artwork tool, I'm going to take you up here to the tools, come down to general options, and coming into digitizing. We are talking about the outline input mode. By default, uh, the simple draw is our choice, but if we use that drop down, we also can play with the free hand. I'll go ahead and okay that. I have a clean screen here. And with our free hand, once I get my pen tool, what it allows me to do, first of all, you notice that your mouse changes to a pencil. I now can draw. I am leaving my finger on the left mouse button, the normal mouse button, and I'm simply doodling. And this is just very fun, depending on how, how much you've practiced. I can right click to end it. If I select it, I can take all my doodle and convert that to a run stitch, and that's exactly what I have. If you practice a little bit, and for this I'm going to bring that grid back up, scroll down just a bit, change my color, I still have my pin chosen. If you practice, you can I'll right click to end that line. You can even maybe right click to end do your signature in a freehand situation, right click to end, draw my T crossing, and then if I um, <clears throat> take a look at this, actually I want my shape tool, I can go in and modify any parts of perhaps I don't like those points, I can right click and delete them and bring one of them down, maybe bring this guy back up a little bit, uh, probably clean up my eye and my uh, curve for my N, maybe bring that line a little closer. So what you have here is your ability to work with the free hand and then as we can with any of the shape tool points, we can modify those points to get the look 
that we are after. So this is a fun thing too, and sometimes this free hand might be the better choice if you are working uh, with a specific kind of artwork. So that is another option that you have. Certainly I can select all of that, right click, convert to, run, and I could actually stitch out my signature. We have another option, we'll go back under Tools, back down to General Options, and this time we'll go into, um, well, we'll go back to Digitizing, and this time we're going to choose the Bezier, and OK that, I'll come to a clean screen, and what Bezier does, if I click, let me get my pencil, if I click with a Bezier, I'm going to click, I'm actually, I plotted my first point, and now I move to plot my second point, but I'm going to click and hold that mouse down and drag. And then if I click and hold down and drag, and hold down, do you see what I'm allowed to do here? With a Bezier curve, you can shape at the same time that you are plotting your points. Again, a right click to end. The Bezier allows us to do that. Something else that's very interesting about the Bezier is you can get a perfect scallop. I'm going to, and this is why I have my grid up, I'm going to click on this line. I know this is an inch away, so I will click and hold, and I am dragging my, my mouse until the arc is at the top here and then coming over to plot my next point. If I click there, do you see that it has given me a perfect scallop on the upper and lower edge? This lower has mimicked what my top arc is. Let's try that again. I'll move over to the inch mark, click and drag down until my arc is where I want it, move over to my inch mark and click, and again, I have a perfect arc. I'll right click into that. The um, Bezier is one of those tools. You, you love it or you hate it. Those of you who are familiar with graphic editing software such as Inkscape, Corel Draw, Adobe Illustrator, you're going to like that because chances are you're comfortable with it. Those of you who think it's confusing, not to worry because whether you are using your Bezier or your Simple Draw, you can always just plot your points, and all I'm doing here, even though we still have Bezier chosen, I'm simply plotting my points. I can grab my shape tool, select all of those points, right click and smooth, and I now have a scalloped edge. What I will probably have to do is a little bit of editing because they're not exactly even as those are that I did on the Bezier. So again, just a little review of that. Um, before I forget, I'm going to go under Tools, come back to General Options, into Digitizing, and put that back to our simple draw so we can continue. The other um, thing I'd like to show you while we're here under Options is under View. This is Personal Preference right here. Show Property Tabs as Icons. Take a look over here in the Property artwork on the um, toolbar for it, you see that we have icons that are indi indicating the different portions of the properties. If you prefer, you can remove that check mark and say OK, and instead notice that those tabs have gone to words. If you are new, you might find that easier. I'm going to leave that up to show you uh, pros and cons of that. Um, and why I choose to leave them as icons. But again, this is a helpful option that you have if you are new to the software. All right, we're coming up to a clean screen, and I'll go ahead and get rid of my grid line. And what I want to do now for you is to play with some other types of artwork. We'll start with our background tool. We're going to be looking at our um, raster and vector images. This is a screen that I have borrowed from that July webinar I told you about in the beginning where we talked about the different kinds of artwork that you can choose, raster and vector. Uh, this is just a very basic review of that. And we're going to play with one of each so you can see what we have. But this is a very helpful slide for you because it tells you what which type of 
artwork is uh, required or can be used with the different options that we have in Perfect Embroidery Pro. Here, I am going to be using royalty-free designs that are found in the public domain websites. Um, I don't like to use someone else's designs without their permission, and these are two that I have used and they seem very reputable. We're going to go to this very top one first, the open clip art, art, because what's interesting about this particular one is it allows us to choose from both raster and vector, so it's kind of like a one-stop shop. We'll go ahead and get on our brow my browser here on my new tab, and I have this particular open clip art as a bookmark. So I'll click on that and you can see the different kinds of clip art that are here. And also you can tell that I did a search for Easter Bunny. It is this little guy right down here that we're going to be playing with this evening. And then also if I come up and start my other search, you'll see that I also search for a snowboarder. And when he comes up, he's pretty fun, I do need to hit the search, we're going to be playing with him. I like this site in that, again, I have my artwork. It has given um, permission and also a little nod to the designer and some other information about that. But as we scroll down, this is where we can choose the format that we want. An SVG is a vector and a PNG is a raster. I'll go ahead and click on the SVG. Very often I will download both of the types. You can see that the download has happened right down here. And then when I go to do the PNG, take a look, I can choose a big, medium, or small. I'll just go ahead and settle for medium. And you can see that that one has been downloaded. At this point, you would go into your download folder and copy both of those pieces of artwork into the appropriate embroidery folder that you are using, which is what I've already done. So. We will start with our backdrop tool. It is this one right here on the left toolbar. I'll click on that. It takes me to the folder that I'm using for this evening. Here is our snow border. We'll go ahead and bring him to screen. And with that, we have uh, our artwork. I like to explain the backdrop tool as artwork behind glass. If you are familiar with a light box, um, it's very similar, if you can vision, envision that, that this design would be under the glass and then we are going to be tracing on top of the glass. While this image is selected, I am in the backdrop tool. We can tell that by looking over here at our properties. You see that the backdrop tool tab is here. But I want to point out to you this tool right here. When you are working with your backdrop, this I use this all the time and I think you'll find it very helpful as well. I don't like to use such a dark image as black as that is. I like to lighten that up just a little bit so I'm going to drag that slider over toward lighter and apply and you can see that it gives me a little bit of gray image. I like to work with that better. If you are finished with the drawing and you slide it all the way over to lighter, it is gone from view. It is not gone from your design or your um, file. If you save this file, the backdrop will be saved with it. So let's go ahead and make that, uh, bring that back up screen a little bit so you all can see it. And then we're going to bring this to screen as true artwork. Let's come up here and choose our pen. And the magic wand becomes available, so I'm going to click it. And again, a better review. Of, of these tools are in that July webinar, but I'll bring my magic wand over and because this is pretty nice artwork, all I'm going to do is click and you can see that it has outlined it. Now, I will get my select because what I also like to do is change it to a red color. It's just easier for me to see the red on the shadowed area. We'll go ahead and get our zoom key and zoom in to show you that when we come back and use our shape tool, because that's what this evening is all about, we could go in 
and work with these individual points, deleting the ones that we think are not necessary. We certainly could drag and select a couple and delete a few at a time. You see I've got a little bit of wobble, and the reason for that is because this is a raster image, and if I zoom in as a little bit of review here, raster images very often have a jagged edge because they are made of pixels. We'll go ahead and uh, I do want to zoom in here so you can see a little of what we're doing. We'll get our shape tool again. And all of these wigglies, I'm going to get rid of all of those wigglies by dragging around all of them and deleting them. I can do the same with the other leg and delete them. Wherever you think you need to do a little editing to your artwork, feel free to do that. Um, this guy is relatively easy and I can do it quickly, which, yes, I did pick this on purpose so we could move through what we're trying to accomplish here. And notice here, when I deleted some of those points, I sort of brought that out, so I simply take a point and drag it down. And again, however much time you have to play with, you can go ahead and um, fix up your artwork as you need to. Now, something else with this guy. I think he's very fun. I like the look of him, I like the, the wild child hair, obviously he's going down the hill, but if you wanted to make this particular artwork more of your own and a little bit more conservative with not such a uh, wild child hair, let's go ahead and zoom in on his head. We'll get our shape tool and I'm simply going to click and drag and select all of those hair points and delete them. We've given him uh, sort of an oddball head. All we need to do with our shape tool is right click and add a point and I can drag that point right up and help shape it with my shape tool and if this is a little high he doesn't really need that bump on his head you can go again go ahead and play with whatever it is that you would like in your particular drawing. As we back out from this and I right click and convert him to a complex fill. Turn on my 3D here. I look at him and just for fun, I think he looks cold. Again, living in Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, very cold here. You're not gonna go out without a hat. So let's come up as a review, use our drop down arrow, our applique shapes, and I happen to know that there's a very nice warm hat down in here for him to use. It comes in as an applique, I'm going to right click, convert that to a complex fill. I also want to come up and use my flip horizontal key, size this hat down a bit, put that on his head, and he looks much warmer. But we have one other situation. Take a look under his hat. I have stitching for his head, so let's put that back where we want it. Right click on that hat and remove those overlaps. Software takes care of that, and now I have those stitches gone under the hat. I'll use my undo key to put it right back where it was, and I am good. That remove overlap will work on our complex fill. It will not work on digitized fonts um, if you're trying to do something like that. Okay, so here's our first artwork. We'll do one more. And as we come, this time we'll use our other option, our file import artwork. I'll come over here to our spring bunny. It comes on screen. What you probably don't see very uh, well is these two white ears. I'm going to delete those. Select the ears. Drag them up a bit. We're going to be playing with our shape key here. We're going to start. I'll zoom out so you can see. I'm going to come up here to my artwork and get my ellipse, hold down my control key, and drag a perfect circle, select it, and select the body of my bunny, and I would like to come up here and do a horizontal center for those two. Then I want to drag my ears onto my bunny head, use my um, shape tool, and I want the tip of that ear to be a line. Let's do the same with our shape over here and make him a line. And I then would like the ears to be a part of the head. 
So this is a little refresher on our weld tool. I will select one ear and the head. When you use your weld tool, right up here, weld can only be used with two selected items, not one, not three, four, or five, just two, because it can only put two things together at once. So now if I hit my weld, I see that the ear has become a part of the head. I'll select the other ear and the head and weld again. This is all one piece. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. And now we're going to go back to our shape tool. Let me zoom in just a little so you can see what we're going to do. Choose shape. And I don't want this bottom circle to be part of the design. So another option that we have with our shape tool is to right click and split that line. Come on over here where they intersect, right click, split that line. And what it does is it breaks this part from my head. I'll go ahead and delete that and zoom out and you can see what we have. Once again, I'm going to select the head and just the body and do my horizontal center again so that our little guy is fine. Now, I see a little uh, situation that I have here that I can fix very easily. If I zoom in, take my shape and get my head, I can drag that shape down to the line and I can drag this one back up to the line, apply that zoom back out and now I'm happy with our little bunny. And at this point you could do whatever you'd like with him. Uh, I have a couple of designs already created here so that you can see. You could choose to duplicate the bunny and make them appliques. You could put Happy Easter, uh, Welcome Spring, you could put the kids initials or the names, whatever it is that you'd like to do. Another thing that I did, um, having fun with our bunny is I made a tall one and here all I did that's the bunny that we created and with our pen tool drew a straight line with our ellipse tool drew an oval and then got that in proportion until I was happy copy pasted and did a mirror image and then here I put a note on the screen if you want to know where I got this grass it is from your free designs in May of 2015 and it is the beach chair. To refresh you on that, we would go back up here in our library to Dime Free Designs. I'll bring this bar down so you can see it a little bit. Now I have put mine into years uh, folders. You may or may not have done that yet, but if I scroll down till my May of 2015 and scroll down, this is the beach chair that I'm talking about and I simply borrowed that grass to put it with my bunny. All right, um, we do have one more, and I have this one partially created for us. We'll bring up the kids, and I did tell you that when you save a design, the backdrop is saved. In this instance, this was the original artwork. It came from that public domains vector.org that I showed you, and I once I uh, put these little guys together, I simply moved them off so you could see the original artwork and um, having fun with that artwork, but to show you also what you can do with your shape key. If we want this little girl to have bangs, I am going to get my select key and select her face, coming up here to do a copy and then a paste and want to change that to brown. Did I actually, I'm going to come back into that because I don't know if I'm showing you if I actually hit on my copy and then paste. I want to change that to brown, bring my shape and select the lower portion of all of those points, a right click and delete them. Let's go ahead and apply and we have given her bangs. Now if we want to give her a little sassy bangs, let's scroll in just a little bit and with our shape tool I'm going to right click and add a point and instead of dragging the point up I'm going to use those handles and apply and here we see a little sassier bang and then if I want to select that item and 
remove overlap. I have now removed the white threads that were under her hair. Kind of looks like a little toupee floating there. Put it back on your head. But again, your shape tool just offers all kinds of things that you can do very easily. Dort, we'll stop there and ask if there's questions. Yes. One of our friends, Susan, asked if you can do an overlap, you can remove the overlap if the item is not grouped or not ungrouped. Shoot, it's grouped. If the item is grouped, are you still able to work with the overlap tool? All right, we'll try the, um, let me see here what I want to play with to put that, well, we'll just put something on screen here. <clears throat> All right, we have a circle, and then we will do a rectangle, and I will select, make that one a red so we can see what's going on, select both of them, and convert to complex fill. And, uh, okay, so if I, normally, I could choose my red, and right click remove overlap and that is taken care of all right so the question becomes what if these two were grouped when they're grouped the answer to that is actually to try it and you can see that when they're grouped I'm not even offered that particular feature so the answer to that would be no okay thank okay. you so much this, and that, and actually, Susan, that's a great question because it brings up your other, for so many uh, questions like that, can I, will it, um, to give it a try and bring up the menu and see if that menu is offered to you. Um, notice that the border is not offered to us here, but I can do a create outline. So it just depends on what you have going on, um, what particular features are available to you. N never, it's never harmful to tr give it a try. Super. All right. Thank you very much. Okie doke. We have one more. Um, and what we want to do here is use our shape key to take an existing design and remove some of those items from it and turn it into a different type of design. All right. I'm going to move this guy up just a bit here so I don't run into, I have some uh, room to get my shape tool going and then I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see it. I would start with um, working with him and going to come back to my sequence and I see that he is indeed grouped. So to answer our question earlier to make sure that I can do all the things I want to do I'm going to first come up here and do an ungroup and then I can select I know that I can I know that that orange color is not necessary for my, uh, just for the snail itself, the shell. I can delete that and then let me move up just a little bit so you can see better. And now I'm going to draw and select my antenna. And now I'm down to the nitty gritty. I've gotten rid of the things that are very easy to get rid of. And at this point, I'm going to bring in my shape tool. And yes, I can draw a box around that, right click and delete, and it will delete as many as it can. And if you want to keep using your apply key to see what's actually happening, I see I have a couple points left and that's fine. I'm just going to work myself through this particular area and delete the ones that I'm allowed to delete with my box and apply to see what I have left. And as I do that, my boxes might get a little smaller to delete those points. And I might draw up there a little bit more to delete those points until the point where I need to get in there individually with my um, tools and so forth. Right here, I can see that this is all one line. So let's get in just a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. With my shape tool, where this line meets this line, I'm going to right click and ask it to split that line. Now, this piece is one, and I can delete it from the keyboard. If I once again bring up shape, and I, I'm going to see what's happening here with my shape tool and where I might be able to break, I'm going to try this first, bring my stop button here, 
right click on that one and split that line. So hopefully this particular piece now is independent and I can delete that. And actually that worked out almost nicely because I now have left I lost my outline, which I don't want, so I'll try that again. And this just becomes um, a little bit of playing on your part, but using that shape tool to take care of those that you no longer want. Now, with this one, let me show you. There's actually a run back and forth here. So these points have double points to them. So when I do a delete, it looks like I didn't delete it, but there's actually a back and forth. For example, that guy right there. So sometimes that's why I will draw a box around them just in case there's two points. I can take care of both of them at the same time. And for something like this, I simply would take that and tuck that point in here. I would take that and tuck that point in as well um, if it's not very much. And then simply I need to uh, take care of this and I will right click and split that line again to see if it will allow me and split it up here at the top. And now I might be where I need to be to delete that and simply tuck in or even delete that little bit that's right there. Nope, that wasn't it. That gave me my whole black line. So in that case, I would take this and simply bring that point back in. There's two there. And bring that back in to the edge. And sometimes it just takes a little bit more playing, but it depends on how badly you want this particular shell all by itself without the snail in it. So again, the shape tool can be very powerful in helping you to take one design and turning it into another. All right, do we have any final questions, Dory? No, everybody's just sitting here mesmerized. You have taught us a lot tonight with the shape tool. Very good. Um, I thank you all. I have one other thing, uh, sort of a little plug for the March webinar. The name of the of March webinar is uh, Turning Modern, Making Things Mod. And what we have decided to do, Dory has had a number of questions about applique and specifically applique with the digital cutters. So in keeping with the modern or the mod theme, March will be covering creating appliques from scratch and then using, working with your applique to be able to bring it over to your digital cutter for your applique pieces. So hopefully you can join us in March as well. And the other thing I'd like to do is give a little shout out to Dory because I talk about, I've tried to give you references in um, a current webinar to previous webinars and what we might have covered already. And what Dory has done for you. Here is the Inspired by Dime YouTube channel. I have it on my bookmark. If I click there, this is what it's going to look like when you visit. And I do need to turn Eileen off. Sorry, Eileen. But I would direct you to the videos and playlists. If you go into videos, you're going to get a look to your screen that they're sort of all there and interspersed with each other and so forth. But if you choose playlists, and here we have divided into groups, into the software. Click on Perfect Embroidery Pro. You will find the webinars in reverse chronological order, meaning the last one that we did is towards the top. But what I want to point out to you is over here, the comments. Dory has made it very easy for you to see what things were covered in which particular webinar. So if you're looking to refresh yourself about a particular item, it will be much easier for you to do that. So um, a big thank you to Dory for making it so very easy for us to have wonderful support for our software. Thank you. And I thank everybody for joining me, and good night. Have a good evening. Thank you.